And Mine Crypto here. I hope we're all having a wonderful day. And the title of the video is The Bank of England Just Confirmed This. Please remember to subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you don't miss any further videos. Remembering I'm not a financial advisor and none of this is financial advice. And none of the information provided in this video should ever be seen as a signal to buy or to sell. But we look at the crypto bubbles as usual and we are down one rank to 67 with a $1.35 billion market cap. Volume down from yesterday down to 28 million, but price is currently sitting at $112. Are we about to see a rise from here? Things are looking okay. Now, I saw this yesterday and I posted this on Twitter. This wallet is now on a roll. Wow. A third transaction in two days. CB to private wallet of 2,178 quant. That was $240,000. Total text in the last two days, this is three transactions at 6,397 quant, a value of nearly $700,000 and it's loading up. This wallet has no outflows, only holds quant. Now people always say, why are you following whale wallets? Well, this isn't a whale wallet in my opinion because it's not a market maker. It has no outflows and it's just bringing these tokens off exchange and therefore being stored. Now there are tons of these wallets. Let's have a deeper look into this particular wallet. This wallet started stacking three years ago and only just recently within the last two days has just grabbed itself nearly 7,000 tokens which is huge because obviously we wonder why. Now is this another tiered wallet for license lockups? That's just speculation at the moment but as we can see there have been no outflows from this wallet either and it's gaining its value as we can see it's 1.839 million dollars of quant just quant now this is looking very very interesting now i see this yesterday and i posted it immediately as i saw it i wonder who the bank of england's tom martin is talking about at the european parliament a standard setting concept of harmonization it requires a policy and an infrastructure layer to deliver true interoperability the Bank of England is setting the standards. As we know, the City of London is the largest exporter of financial services in the world. Now, some of this language, to me, is very Gilbert-esque. Some of this Gilbertisms, you know, the true interoperability, the true infrastructure layer. And to me, there is only one true interoperable layer, which is quant. That's just my personal opinion. So let's have a listen. I actually went to the actual video where it gets a bit juicy. So let's have a listen to this. Could, could you just, um, you mentioned interoperability just a moment ago and also um, uh, during our, our preparation call. Could you maybe uh, touch, uh, touch briefly on what you mean by uh, interoperability in this context? And then we'll come back to uh, Commissioner for swaps and then uh, give uh, Andre to have the last word here. So. So uh, my experience of these sorts of events is if you, you want to talk at one of these panels and you don't want to do any prep, then you just sort of randomly use the word interoperability as much as you can because it's almost impossible to pin you down on it. Um, and uh, generally, a lot of what follows is utterly banal as well. Um, for me, it's, um, it's really two dimensions. And we think about this a lot in the context of the digital pound, uh, but also around things like stable coins, for example, tokenized bank deposits. Um, but it applies much more broadly. Um, I think it's really three things. First of all, how to make sure that certain types of digital assets uh, are interchangeable and interoperable with each other. Uh, so easy uh, uh, transmission between different types of digital assets. Then I think interoperability with other types of money, which uh, could include things like central bank money. Uh, and then I think there is uh, a third type of interoperability, uh, which is across uh, different types of technology stacks. And in particular, I think across different types of distributed ledger, uh, across chains. Uh, those terms, um, I think, could be disputed. I think people could challenge that, that premise of interoperability. I think often when people talk about interoperability, they actually mean exchange. Um, but I think it's a really important topic, one where I think uh, the concept of standard setting, the concept of harmonization is very important, uh, and it requires both a policy layer and an infrastructure layer to deliver true interoperability. So there you go. You hear him say to deliver true interoperability and gives us a definition of what that actually is. Now, if we move over to an interview, this is on 
blockchain brad's interview with gilbert verdian and it for me it reiterates all what's already been said and what he keeps saying it's almost like he's telling us without telling us and other people are reiterating that people like tom mutton of the bank of england so let's have a listen to this so that you can connect the dots too well given that it makes perfect sense to discuss competitors in the space because we've alluded to some that are in that single vertical operating as single blockchains in many 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 instances but there are some emerging guild that aren't um, for example, One Ledger uh, or Morpheus Labs. There are some that are not only parallel scaling, but they're also trying to be that one-stop shop protocol that interlink as a, essentially a blockchain glue. So in that respect, is there a place for the emergence of more than one of these kinds of protocols or one of these kinds of services that link them together? Yeah, I think, um, you know, it, the market needs... Uh, a lot of these solutions to be solved and, and people are doing it in different ways and, and, and that's fine and, and, and it, if it fits people's needs then then, then they can use it and, and that works for them then that, that's a good thing um, but the one thing to add uh, a, a lot of these approaches so so one ledger as um, it, again it's it's another blockchain you know we're, we're grouping a lot of these into into a single category and we're calling them interoperability blockchains right because because they're they're sitting Either as a side chain or a virtual chain on top of, um, you know, Ethereum and Neo and Hyperledger and whatever. Sure. But they're they're making, you know, a a consensus or, or or something that happens on Ethereum go and connect into one ledger's blockchain, do that all over again, and then go down into the other blockchain and then do a lot of all over again. So it, they they are not they're not truly interoperable because they're they're producing overhead and uh, adding an, another complexity on top of what's already within uh, a blockchain so so i think these solutions that, that there's quite a few and and yeah you mentioned a, a few as so aon polka dots right. one ledger mm -hmm. icon arc you know they're, they're all doing it in a similar way but I, I i think from from our experience that way produces more complexity and and that's not going to go down well with enterprise that they, they don't sure. They, they want to de-risk what they're doing in blockchain, not increase right. risk. They, they want to de-risk what they're doing in blockchain, not increase right. risk. There you go. You heard it from the man himself. It's not truly interoperable and it produces another complexity and it's not going to go down well with enterprises. I think this is where we look at Quant and its enterprise grade interoperability. It creates a security layer. And that there for me really... Um, hits home with regards to what the Bank of England are saying, the true interoperability, which is what I believe to be Quan. So there you go, guys, a bit of juicy information and some alignment with regards to what has been said and what is being said currently via Tom Mutton. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe. Please hit that notification bell so that you don't miss any further videos. All the best and I'll catch you later.